Hello and welcome back to my channel. As you can see from the title of this video, I am going to be talking about my 10 best books of 2024 so far. I recently hit the halfway point of my yearly goal. I had set my goal this year at 120 books, which is 10 books a month, but I have been reading more than that. And uh, so I did hit 60 books just the other day and I was like, okay, it's not halfway through the year, but it's halfway through my goal. So, you know, even if I don't read any more than 120 books this year, like I've, I've hit my goal, we're at the halfway point. So I wanted to talk about my top 10 books so far this year. And this was a hard list to choose. I have had a great year so far as far as quality and just overall just my happiness with the books that I've been choosing. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Now these are in no order. I love all my children equally. These are all the same to me. First of all, I started the year reading Needful Things by Stephen King. This was a long book, so I did read a lot of it in the month of December, but I brought it into the new year, so that's where it counts. And this is one that I had heard about so much from Stephen King fans, and I just had never read it. And And to be quite honest, it was part of why I wanted to set my yearly reading goal lower, because I wanted to feel a little bit more open and a little bit more empowered to read longer books. I feel like I set myself up for failure if I made my goal too high. Last year I read over 200 books, but 200 was my goal. And I feel like I really steered away from reading some long books that I had wanted to read because I was just like, oh no, I gotta, gotta focus on quantity. So yeah, I was very happy to be starting out with such a great book for a long one in the beginning of this year. This is about a man who moves to town. Leland Gaunt is his name. Moves to Castle Rock, Maine and opens a shop called Needful Things. And in this shop, he has whatever it is you want. And that could be anything. It means different things for different people. And he's like, oh, I just, whatever changes in your pocket and a favor later on. So you could buy like the thing you want more than anything in the whole world for like 50 cents if that's all you have, but you are indebted to this man. And he's not a good man, despite what he, comes off like. So this was a really good book. I really flew through it. There's a lot of characters in it that we already kind of know a little bit from some of Stephen King's other books set in Castle Rock. So that was cool. And yeah, I just I really enjoyed this. I feel like it's a must read for Stephen King fans. And it was my first five star book of the year. Another one of my favorites is The Displacements by Bruce Holsinger. This is a book I actually liked way more than I had expected to. This was a book club pick for my book club. And it was my suggestion, even though I was very nervous about reading it, because this author wrote another book called The Gifted School that I had high hopes for and I really did not like. So I was kind of iffy going in, but the plot sounded so good. I just like wanted to give it a try and I'm so happy I did because I loved it. One of my favorite books so far of 2024. So this follows a really wealthy family who are caught in the middle of a hurricane. So this family lives in South Florida. They have like everything they could ever want. The father is a doctor making all this money that gives the wife Daphne time to become be a full-time artist like she wanted to two kids and like just everything's great they are just you know the, the American all American like wealthy family I guess then the world's first category six hurricane hits Miami and they have to evacuate husband can't remember his name is off doing doctor things for pe for patients that had to be evacuated. So this mom is on her own with the kids and they are driving up to Orlando and then trying to just evacuate the area, but she ends up losing her purse and doesn't have any money, doesn't have a phone, nothing. And it's it's very interesting because she kind of has to learn how to live like a poor person or a person without a lot of means and she gets, you know, into these like FEMA camps and like doesn't get the treatment she was used to. And like, she's really having to see how the other other half lives. So I just, I really, really, obviously it's more nuanced. There's more complexities to 
to it than that, but that is the general basis, and I just really enjoyed that. I like seeing rich people realize what it's like to not be rich, and I, I really thought it was great. I've been in many a hurricane growing up in Florida, so I appreciated that it was pretty accurate as far as like how these things happen, especially regarding like people not taking evacuation orders seriously. But I really thought this was fantastic and yeah, easily one of my favorite books of 2024. Another favorite is Come and Get It by Kylie Reed. So this book I read back in January and I definitely did not expect to love it and I did. This is definitely not a book for everyone. I feel like I've said that from the beginning. This is 100% all vibes, no plot. But it's the vibes are there. The vibes are amazing. This is about a an author who is doing like a visiting professor situation at a college who kind of forms an unlikely friendship maybe more with a student who is an RA and then it kind of talks about like this RA's um, residence on her hall and like their lives and it's just a really like a picture of this situation at the University of Arkansas in 2017. I can't remember if that was real. I feel like that had to be relevant, but I can't really remember exactly why <laughs> the year, but it was, I just was blown away. And I would love to revisit this one perhaps later in this year because I read it so early on in this year that I'm like, kind of feel like I'm forgetting stuff and I don't want to. Yeah, it was, if you, if you love a character driven novel, with like just really complex characters and a lot of deep dives into these characters, you will like this. If you need a fast paced plot, this is not the book for you, but I would definitely recommend it if it sounds at all interesting. It was so good. Next is Familia by Lauren E. Rico. I read this back in January as well and I just adored it. This was so, so beautiful. This is about a woman named Gabby who works as a fact checker for a magazine and or a newspaper, I can't remember, but she ends up doing like a genealogy test for an article that she's writing and finds out that she has a biological sister who has been trying to find her. But the thing is like she doesn't. She knows she doesn't. Her parents passed away, but like her parents were married to each other. They were very happy. And like, there's just, there's just no way. And she's having like a little bit of trouble at work. She's trying to move up to like a, a, like an actual journalist as opposed to just a fact checker. This woman that um, says that their sisters lives in Puerto Rico. So she's like, okay, I'm going to go to Puerto Rico and I'm going to find out once and for all that, you know, you are not really related to me. But what do you know like they do another blood test and like they are sisters and there's no way around it so it kind of gets into well, like how is this possible and it was just so sweet and it was just so lovely um I found the whole like mystery element of like wait but what so intriguing and I loved these characters and their relationship it was just and the setting oh talking all about Puerto Rico, like it was just gorgeous. And this was just such a nice book. I love starting the year with this. And I feel like I haven't heard too many people talking about it, but it was just incredible. I recommend it so much. The next book is Charlie Hustle by Keith O'Brien. This is about Pete Rose and it's really just a biography about Pete Rose. <laughs> but I loved the way it was written. It was like the perfect balance of like informative but also personal I really felt like I got a really well-rounded picture of who Pete Rose is as a human as a ball player but like without I mean I know that we all have our own like prejudices biases but like this felt as neutral as one could possibly get even though we all you know we all have these things but it it was so interesting and I loved learning about things I did not know about Pete Rose. I'm a huge baseball fan. If you have been around my channel for a while, you know this. And I've had my opinions on Pete Rose for a long time and about whether he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, whether his lifetime ban is warranted. And I feel like my opinions are the same after reading this, but I feel like I have different reasons and I have more well-defined and I can articulate better 
why I have the opinions I do. And so that really just, you know, clarified stuff for me. And I just really, really loved this. I thought it was so well written. And I feel like it would be accessible to anyone not, not just like a baseball fan who like can understand a lot of stuff. It would be definitely more enjoyable for a baseball fan. But if you just like a good biography, I would still recommend it. Next is Darling Girls by Sally Hepworth. This is a new favorite thriller of all time, for sure. I could not believe how incredible this was because the synopsis did not like make it sound like it was so unique and special. But this is about these three girls who grew up in foster care together in this home. They suffered a lot of abuse and they did end up getting separated, but like they stayed in touch like they are sisters. And so they are adults now. They've all kind of gone on to live their own lives, but they find out that their foster home that they lived in and were abused at was like demolished and they found human remains in the yard. And so they're being called in to like help with, I guess, see what they know about this. And, you know, I feel like it's one of those like returning to the scene of the crime several years later situations. And so, I mean, I was excited. I like Sal Sally Hepworth, so I was excited to read it, but I did not expect to love it this much. There was so much heart in this book three main characters but like none of them were stereotypes you know none of them felt like cliches they all had really sweet relationships with each other they all had redeeming qualities but they all were also flawed human beings and I just loved this I thought this was really good and I like could not put it down so this is a must read for thriller fans another top favorite is nearly wed by Nicholas DiDemisio I could just talk about this forever I could not love this more this is about a gay couple who are engaged and one of them Ray is obsessed with weddings he's he's just dreamed of his wedding day his entire life and his hometown is home to this resort that's just generally known as like an early moon hotel. So people go there before their weddings to like kind of get away from it all. And it's like very, very romantic and special. And so he has just dreamed of going there with his fiance since he was a little kid. And so he does. But his fiance is not fully out. And that is starts to create some problems because they are very much in love but very different people in a lot of ways and it gets really complicated when Ray's fiance Kip runs into an old friend at the resort who does not know he's gay and Kip had formerly been married to a woman and so yeah it's complicated and there's a lot to do with like how do we in relationships like define our ourselves and does another person I guess get to define you <laughs> that doesn't really make much sense yeah it, it's it's really a great great story I thought it was sweet romantic and hilarious this author can do no wrong in my eyes I will read anything he writes and yeah this is just so good we are getting close to more recent books so you've probably heard about these so bear with me but uh, next I'm gonna go with Percy Jackson and the Olympians the lightning thief so I'm sure that this series is gonna become a new favorite but I just loved this book it was like just so like light and easy and it did feel very very young but it's a children's book so like of course it is but I just had so much fun reading it. I loved these characters. I got super into the story and I am so excited. There are so many more left to read because I am so into it. If you don't know, which probably everyone does because I know that like I'm late to the game here, but it's about a kid named Percy who finds out that he is, well, I won't say cause it's kind of a spoiler, but he is a half blood between like a Greek god and a human. And he kind of like has some powers, but he's like learning how to harness. It, it's very, it's very Harry Potter-esque in that sense that he's the beginning of the first book. He's like finding out who he is. And, and so it goes from there. And I just, I loved it. It was so much fun. And I can't wait to keep reading the series. Next is a romance, which 
doesn't usually end up on my top 10 list, but The Paradise Problem by Christina Lauren, ugh, I just could die. I loved this so much. I just finished reading this maybe two weeks ago or so, and I just thought it was so amazing. It reminded me a lot of Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating, not as far as the plot goes, but as far as the two leads. I loved the main character, Anna. She was just an absolute mess of a human, but a delightful one. And West slash Liam, <laughs> it's a long story, but we'll go with, we'll call him Liam, the main guy. They were married, but it was very much a marriage of convenience so that they could both live in uh, campus housing for married couples. They really didn't interact much. But they did have this like fake marriage, but they like really didn't know much about each other. So five years go by after they've gotten divorced and Liam comes back into Anna's life and says like, hey, I need you to like pretend you're still my wife because my family thinks that we're still married and like they've never met you and like what, whatever. And she's like, um, what? No, like her, her life is in a rough spot. But basically he's like, I will pay you to go to my little sister's wedding and you know, when we're done, we'll actually like get a divorce. And she's like, wait, what? Because he never actually like turned in the, the papers because he is like the heir to like this huge grocery store chain and he can only get his inheritance if he stays married for like five years or something. So yeah, <laughs> and it is just so cute. I love, Anna because she's a lot like Hazel, like I said. She's very much like, this is who I am, take it or leave it. There's like not a lot of secrets with her. She's very like open about who she is and she's not willing to change that or act differently to appease some rich people. And I just really loved this. I thought it was great. And like there have been a few Christina Lauren books in the last few years that have really not been it for me something wilder. I like DNF that. I thought it was awful. And so I'm so happy that like they are back as far as I'm concerned because I just I thought this was so good. And lastly, you might already know this if you saw my recent reel or whatever they're called here, short. And uh, that is Rainbow Black by Maggie Thrash. This was unbelievable. I feel like I've said about a lot of these that I didn't expect to love it as much as I did, but I mean, I, I thought this sounded really good, but I just, I didn't know it would hit me as hard as it did. I thought it was going to be way less, I don't want to say plot heavy, but I thought that it was going to be just, I guess, more forgettable <laughs> than it was to me. So this is about a girl named Lacey growing up in the 90s in New Hampshire and her parents are very like hippie and they run a daycare and they're out in like the country in New Hampshire. And so one day they get arrested, her parents, for um, child molestation charges and sexual abuse and it got, it's a big mess. <laughs> Because Lacey, I think she's like 10 and she has an older sister, but like she's kind of in and out of her of her life. It's just, it's kind of a mess. This kid is trying to figure things out and every, oh, and there's a lot about like this being like devil worship. They, they worship the devil. They like drink blood. They have ritual sacrifices, stuff like that. Because it was like the height of the satanic panic. And so Lacey is just kind of left on her own. And none of the adults in her life are being helpful. Her parents are both being like, they've already been um, convicted as far as the justice system goes. Like they, they just are, you know, everyone's terrified of like the devil. So there's really the trial is just a sham. And so we follow Lacey as a kid and then we flash forward several years later. I don't even want to go into anything further because it's just a book that like takes you on a ride. It reminds me a lot of Dark Places by Gillian Flynn, which is my favorite Gillian Flynn book. And I, I mean, it worked out really well that this reminded me of that. Definitely similar vibes, similar main character. None of the, none of the main characters in here are like super likable, but they all are super 
interesting and complex and oh, I don't I don't even know what to say about this book. It was just so good and it is super super queer. So if you are trying to read more queer books, especially with Pride Month coming up, this is definitely one to pick up. This is kind of what I would call like a literary thriller, but it's not like highbrow. I don't know. I, 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 I'm gonna stop talking and just tell you to go read this right now. And with that, we are done. Those are my top 10 books so far in 2024. I hope that I have plenty more to share with you at the end of the year or when I hit my goal. I might do this two more times. <laughs> one when I hit my, my yearly goal and then another one at the end of the year. They could be the same video, who knows? So yeah, I would love to know what your favorite book is so far in 2024. If you've read any of these, I would love to know your opinions. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you would, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.